my, of my I have two middle names and my first name is A E V. Those are my initials. So instead of I put Ave in front of a lot of things. And I'll say some people are like, Oh, you're a devil, you're devilish. I'm like, no, nah, I'm evilish. I'm evil. I'm not a devil. Like there's evil there, but it's very guided and it's very structured it's, and it's it's not meant to harm you. But it is gonna test you in a way that you're extremely not comfortable. I take very ugly things and I put pretty things on them. Like, why would you do that? Why would you take the ugliest thing in the world and dress it in Prada? Like, why would you do that? I was like, why wouldn't I do it? I was like, there's so many things wasted. There's so there's so much mold that people conform to. Everybody's breaking their arms and backs to fit a mold. Having butt injections and boob injections and face injections. And they're sucking things out and they're stuffing things up. Everyone's trying to fit the mold that they want. I was like, but you have to be able to look at something different to not, be, you know, create a suffrage for the rest of the world to be in. I mean, just like I was talking about in um, self-love and self-hate, I was talking about how the mirrors that we look into and the people who sacrifice certain things so the world could become a better place and the people who are not selfish, but they don't, they take their chances, they do them. Before they do, they let everybody else do that. I guess that's kind of like what I want to say. Yeah, but you have to have, especially like the greatest people, the designers and the innovators, they are always out on planks that defy gravity. They are not ordinary specimens. They always do things that create... Uh, mysticism and it creates danger in the world and especially in, in, in hood environments I mean they're expecting danger to come out here they're expecting toughness beyond tough they're expecting you know the knuckle grinding on a concrete type of tough you know what I mean that's what they're looking for and a lot of people in the hood are not built that way they're just in survival mode and a lot of them are stuck but they have great ideas and they have great inventions and they have good spirits about them and they just want to be seen and heard and respected like me i'm i'm getting bad shit crazier every day but i'm also getting more comfortable in that dichotomy and that in that rashness every day and my creativity is becoming more i ain't me every single day i get you know stronger and i get smarter and I get, I create more of an ability to handle hotter things or weirder looking things. It's like, I get more of a drive to to push the envelope a little further. And then I also, while doing such things, I think of little moments or little, you know, little things that, oh, that'll help, that'll help my mind later on. Or that'll help me, you know, ponder in the right places. That'll help me think more. And that'll really help my position in life. Like, that's why I do these, this podcast here. Because I need, you know, the freest help I can get in self-help. I need to help myself without leaning on every freaking body for their answers. And I was sitting in my, in my mom's room the other day. And I was sitting here like, I was like, well, I'm so disturbed in my soul plate right now. I just need to know what to think about so I'm at peace. And then I kept having, you know, because I'm, and the way you're counting, you know, during the day, you count every couple of seconds, you count, you take account of something, and then you breathe and you realize you're breathing, you move on to the next thing. But there has to be something very discreet that you're concentrating on that makes the moment more soluble, it makes it more mature. And I actually thought about it. I said, I wonder if I got to really think on what I've learned from my problems. And I really sit in this black, like, placid black cup. Not like a cold capital black. <laughs> Not like a, a cold capital black. But more like a placid cup where I sit in. When the moment strikes me looking for light and genius, I give it thinking on what I've learned. Growing from my mistakes. <laughs> And then I, you know, I, I sit there and I sweep through that moment. I was like, oh my God, that was a good sweep. That really, 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 I, was, I really, you know, I understand it now. I'm not 
you know, as crazy as I could be or I got I learned a lesson. So there's certain I'm jumping back and forth actually from you know, soul plating to evaluating self love, self hate and then I'm you know, I'm back with the placid cup and I'm contemplating what I've learned from my lessons in life. And then sometimes I'm like outside of my monk and I'm just reflecting my my experiences and what I've learned from uh the supernatural law of destruction and other times I'm in story mode and I'm writing poems. And what I what I also what I learned about poem writing is, you know, I'm gonna share something free with you that I learned. Uh if you can write uh through a physical uh injury like a lot of times when I'm writing I used to just go off the top of the dome whatever I was feeling. Now what I do is I write from wherever the idea came from and I go through I make sure when I'm writing I concentrate through my right shoulder which is always in pain especially my rotary cuff and I write till my wrist starts shaking violently and my hand like crunches down in a cramp and then I drop the pen. So in in my recent poems you'll see that I'm writing and all of a sudden it starts getting dark and then I start physically writing that you know the pen and the wrist and my, my wrist is giving out this is dying. The blood is is curdling. I'm screaming in my in my knuckles, and then the poem ends. So if you can do that, you know that'll really create. That'll put your mark in the work. You'll say, "Oh, that's the girl that writes till her hand turns into a crip, or her hand wrinkles over like an old person." She's the old lady cramp writer. She's deformed. She's a, that's the deformed wrist writer, or you know what I mean. You'll put your mark on it without having to be so you know, artistic and, <clears throat> and, you know, you got to give yourself, you know, room and you have to give yourself, uh, responsibility. You got to take care of those parts of you that aren't as mature as other parts, you know, no matter how deformed they come out, no matter what they, you know, it may sound to you like in, out of the middle of nowhere, it's something you're not expecting to hear something crazy. But just the body just in convulsion from the trauma experienced during the day that you can't really get, you know, into the poem like you want it to. Yeah. But that's what I was thinking about earlier today. I was thinking about, uh, you know, my mind made, uh, sometimes my mind is very immature. It's only because it was, it was locked up and pushed you know, into a really, really small box and forced to behave a certain way. And it didn't, it didn't break, but it did adopt certain energies that it could, certain energies that are prone to pulling you down. And because it was staying down, it said, it's not good for me to have a positive energy here. It's only good for me to have a depressed energy here because depression pulls you into a place like this. So I said, okay, I'm just going to be depressed till this person opens up and then I'm going to start emptying this energy out and then pulling back the energy I'm used to having. Then I talk about, you know, like my racial skin music types and then I was talking about, uh, you know, comparabilities and compatibilities and things of that nature. And I don't know. Being deformed in your artistry, trying to to reinvent yourself according to what you can tolerate and tolerabilities and you know that stuff that sounds good because you're a good person at heart and you have to do good but you know uh, I'm still you know working hard trying to give you good content you know really put my brain to the test trying to think of new things creative things uh my downloads are steadily going up my monetization isn't through the roof you know, I'm still around a dollar, but, you know, for me, it's good. You know, I'm just one of those people. It just takes a long time for me to bridge gaps and to, you know, to become the it in the situation where you can bounce off me no matter where I am on the planet or no matter where the planet is with me. I love this way after midnight and uh, I need to get some sleep. So, you know how it goes. Uh, I'll play you a little uh, favorite butt cheeks and then I'm off the slate. So I'll see you when I see ya. Talk to you later. Put on your favorite butt.
cheeks, put them on. And this is my favorite. My favorite butt cheeks. And I'm going to put them on. Put on your favorite butt cheeks, put them on. And these are my favorite. My favorite butt cheeks. And I'm going to put them on. As much as I thought I could plan a podcast, that is not going to happen. I do not have the mindset to sit here. <laughs> Chop up, block, block. How I'm going to tell you about weight loss and weight gain.